Warm greetings from TNV Academy. Today in this session we will discuss about ISO 10993-1 which is premier medical device testing for risk management. However, before we start let me tell you about the key points that we will discuss in this session. During this session we will discuss what is ISO 10993-1 and why it is important. How do regulatory authorities approach ISO 10993-1? When should medical device manufacturers consider ISO 10993-1? And what do medical device manufacturers need to do comply? So let's begin our session and talk about what is ISO 10993-1 is all about and why it is important. ISO 10993-1 is the first part of a series of a standard to evaluate and biocompatibility of medical devices. Biocompatibility as defined as the FDA is the ability of a device material to perform with an appropriate host response in a specific situation. In other words, manufacturers need to ensure that the various materials and manufacturing processes used in a device or a device delivery system support safety or do not pose risk to patients or clinicians. The overall purpose of ISO 10993-1 is to provide a framework in which to plan a biological evaluation as a part of the overall evaluation and development of each medical device. It sets the storage to truly identify potential risks resulting from the product's material as well as manufacturing processes. Generally, this starts with a complete chemical characterization. Why is ISO 10993-1 important? While ISO 10993-1 sets the stage and the remaining parts of ISO 10993 dig into the details, part 1 should by no means be overlooked. This is because the 2018 update of ISO 10993-1 indicate a significant shift in the approach to supporting preclinical medical device safety. Instead of a checklist based approach, the standard moved towards a risk based approach that starts with understanding the materials and the chemical constituents in those materials with increased emphasis on chemical characterization biocompatibility testing alone cannot always be relied on to with increased emphasis on chemical characterization biocompatibility testing alone cannot always be relied on to support medical device safety a true understanding of the materials and manufacturing processes as mentioned, most often adjust with chemical characterization should precede by biological testing. This will also help to refine the biological test plan. Now we will talk about how do regulatory authorities approach ISO 10993-1. Every region has different interpretations and preferences for what they want to see in the application process, not to mention while the EU for the most part accepts ISO standards with exceptions. The US FDA does not recognize all ISO 10993 standards. So simply following ISO standards may not result in the acceptance of your biocompatibility evaluation. The good news is that ISO 10993-1 is recognized by both the FDA and EU medical device regulation MDR. However, both regulatory bodies differ in their approach to assessing quality and the overall profile, devices classifications and clinical testing procedures. In 2020, the FD published their own guidance to provide further clarifications regarding the use of ISO 10993-1. While the standards has not been harmonized across all EU countries, the MDR considers it a state of the art as it is the most recent published version of an acceptance standards. So let's talk about when should medical device manufacturers consider ISO 10993-1. ISO 10993-1 is the applicable fairly early in the medical device testing and risk management process. This is because it actually helps medical device manufacturers understand their product testing requirements by classifying medical devices according to the nature and duration of the contact with human tissues when in use. So once a manufacturer identifies this information, they can use it as a guide to identify the biological endpoints that need to be addressed to support safety for your device according to the standard. 
So once a manufacturer identifies this information, they can use it as a guide to identify the biological endpoints that need to be addressed to support safety for your device according to the standard. This will also help fill in some of the gaps with their timeline for regulatory submission. ISO 10993-1 should also be considered when there is a change in the medical devices manufacturing process, material or supplier. These changes can have unintended consequences for safety and may require testing to demonstrate equivalence to the initially approved or clear product. So let's move forward to our last point of discussion, what do medical device manufacturers need to do comply? There are generally three phases involved in evaluating biological risk as a part of a biological evaluation under ISO 10993-1, complete chemical characterization, toxicological risk assessment and biocompatibility testing ideally in that order. The first one is complete chemical characterization identifies the chemicals and the quantity of those chemicals per device. Additional data often needs to be generated through extractables, leachables, EL testing. EL testing can provide sufficient data to provide some biological endpoints including genotoxicity and systematic toxicity helping you avoid costly and time consuming biological testing. The second one is toxicological risk assessment considers each chemical and the quantity and derives a margin of safety based on patient population and intended use. The third one is biocompatibility testing. Covers local effect for example irritation and any systematic effects specific to the device that could not be addressed in the toxicological risk assessment. For example pyrogenicity or need to be conducted to mitigate potential concerns identified in the toxicological risk assessment. For example, genotoxicity or subacute and subchronic toxicity. Once all of the data have been gathered, ISO 10993-1 requires a qualified individual, usually a toxicologist, to review the data and develop a weight of evidence argument called a biological evaluation. Historically, device manufacturers have been able to reach successful submission with biocompatibility testing alone. However, more often than not, this is no longer the case. Beginning with biocompatibility testing is no longer a best practice because complete chemical characterization followed by a favorable toxicological risk assessment can often address several biocompatibility endpoints. Now here are few key takeaways for compliance. The first one is use a risk based approach to support the safety of your product. The second one is use chemistry data and risk assessment to develop a biocompatibility test plan. This can often save unnecessary use of animals in testing and costly test articles. The third one is outsource testing to an experienced laboratory partner that offers a full range of preclinical device testing service. This can be instrumental in accelerating the process and getting your device to market before others. The fourth one is work with qualified scientists, chemists and toxicologists. ISO 10993-1 also includes ensuring that qualified individuals carry out the biological evaluation. So it matters whom you choose to work with. Many regulators request credentials of the medical device evaluation staff to determine credibility and gauge the quality of resulting data. So we have now come to the conclusion of this session. In case you have any questions on what we have discussed today, then please put them in the comment section of the video and we will be really happy answering them. Till we meet next, it's best wishes from TNV Academy. Thank you.